Hi, I'm Brian Curry, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, the cell cycle. You've got trillions of cells in your body. You might wonder what they do there. They go through the cell cycle. This comes in four stages, the G1 phase, the S phase, the G2 phase, and cell division. The G1 phase is the main growth phase of the cell. The cell's just been created, so it needs to get bigger. A lot of this involves transporting materials. There are two types of transport, active and passive. In passive transport, no energy is used. There are three types of passive transport. First up is diffusion. In diffusion, let's say you have a large number of things outside the cell. There's a very high concentration. In diffusion, they will move through the cell membrane until the concentration is roughly equal. This works well with nonpolar molecules and uncharged substances that can simply go right through. But what about charged substances that just can't make it through the membrane? For that, there's facilitated diffusion another form of passive transport. In this one, a protein will act as a bridge, allowing charged or polar substances to go right through and diffuse. The last type of passive transport is osmosis. This is very similar to diffusion, but instead of the concentrated substance moving, water moves. So let's say again there's a high concentration of something outside the cell, maybe salt. Water will move from the inside the cell to the outside to equalize the concentration. That's passive transport. Active transport is a little more interesting. It uses energy. This can be done in a number of ways, one of which is to use, again, a membrane protein. Let's say the substance we want floats in here. The membrane protein will suddenly snap shut, causing the object to be trapped inside the cell. This is usually done against a concentration gradient, where diffusion or osmosis would not allow this to happen, active transport does. The other two types of active transport are phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Let's say this is the object we want to bring inside the cell. In phagocytosis, the cell will wrap itself around the object, and ultimately glom over it. That's phagocytosis for physical objects, something that is a solid. Pinocytosis is for a liquid, and more or less the same process. Alright, that's the G1 phase. In the S phase, DNA copies itself, so that there are two copies and it's ready for cell division. But before that, there's the G2 phase. This is the second growth phase, not as pronounced as the G1 phase, but just a little bit more right before cell division. Cell division is usually mitosis. We start out in the prophase. Here, the centromeres go to opposite ends of the cell and start forming spindle fibers. Centromeres usually just sit around the cell and provide structure. The nuclear envelope is also starting to break down, and you can see the chromosomes. Here is an up-close chromosome. In the center, we have a centromere, and on either end, we have sister chromatids. Sister chromatids possess more or less the same kind of information, hair color, eye color, so on and so forth. A chromosome by itself, however, usually looks like this. What we think of as a chromosome is actually two copies of the same genetic information. In metaphase, the chromosomes line up along the center of the cell and attach to spindle fibers. Now, the phrase here is homologous chromosomes. They code for the same information. So when they split up, each cell has a copy of the information it needs. In anaphase, the spindle fibers start to contract, and you actually see the chromosomes get pulled to opposite ends of the cell. In telophase, we see sort of a cleavage starting to form. It's beginning to split off into two separate cells, and the nuclear envelope for each cell begins to form. Then we have cytokinesis, the actual pulling apart, and we have two separate cells, which go into the G1 phase. The combined G1, S, and G2 phase are known as interphase, and can be considered just a big lump of the cell cycle, right before heading back into prophase. To recap. The cell cycle comes in four parts, G1, S, G2, and cell division. In the G1 phase, this is the main growth phase, and the cell grows. There are two types of transport that the cell can use right now, active and passive. In passive transport, no energy is used. There are three types of passive transport. Diffusion, where a high concentration diffuses substances to a lower concentration, usually inside the cell. Osmosis, in which water will come out of the cell or into the cell to equalize concentration and facilitate diffusion, where substances will either go into or out of the cell through a protein channel. 
Then there's active transport, which, which uses energy. This is usually against the concentration gradient. A protein will either close around a substance as needed inside the cell, or through phagocytosis, the cell will wrap around an object to bring it in, or through pinocytosis, it will bring in a liquid, in much the same way as phagocytosis. In the S phase, cells will start replicating their DNA. When they're done, they head into G2, a shorter growth phase, before heading into cell division. This is made up of the prophase, where the spindle fibers start to form and the nuclear envelope breaks down. Metaphase, where the chromosomes line up along the center of the cell. Anaphase, where they're pulled apart. Telophase, where cleavage starts to form and the nuclear envelopes as well. And finally, cytokinesis brings the cells apart and interphase begins, the G1, S, and G2 phase. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.